Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Tech Collections. Today, I bankrupt once again by Adam, as today we are bringing you Super 17, the green one, taking on SS4 Bardock, which is a deck that got some anniversary love, which was initially an anniversary deck itself, which is fantastic. So like always, just button to check them out. Let's get into this match. What's going on? Ah oh, man, just living the dream, you know, bringing out another uh, deck that I really... Love playing. Happy that it got some anniversary support. Uh, and seventeen got some anniversary support. Too, yes, which we've had. We've had seventeen on on uh, the channel before. I do plan on bringing the uh, profile out later this week because I think I'm 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 done playing. I played it. We so this was before our locals. Uh, we had some time to kill. I didn't know if we were gonna get. Um, I know what was happening. Truth be told, <laughs> a lot of people weren't showing up. So we went ahead and recorded a couple games while we we're waiting for people. And I was like, I've played Super 17 for the last two weeks. I haven't had time to build anything. I don't want to play it. I'm going to play a deck that Fluff had built and just go with it, go with that. So we decided to get a match in because you weren't actually going to play this deck initially either. So it just kind of worked out. Yeah. Yeah. And I, it, the, the Bardock deck is, is quite interesting. I think that the support for the deck is really great, but you have to decide to either go full into that support or play it the classic way, which is utilizing your uh, your energy area and those effects from those cards. Uh, it felt a little bit clunky for me because I, I I only have like I think it's like seven cards from the new anniversary stuff. So I I think I have to kind of decide if I want to go full into the anniversary, which is fantastic, or if I just want to continue playing the classic. I, I will say throughout this match, we do see a couple of those cards do make some play, which is like has mm -hmm. a lot, the ability early on to do some searching, which is great. Yeah, absolutely. Here, I just wanted to make sure to show people, I know how this card works. I think in past videos, I messed up on it. But it, uh, activate me, you put the rest mode, you draw one card, search your deck for um, the pretty much the 18 or so to put on your leader. Which, this card is fantastic for the support. It allows you to do crazy good things like on the road, which I've always had issues with, and which is why I always play the yellow promo. Uh, I think it's, I think it's Hellfire 17. It might be regular 17. I can't remember. But it puts itself underneath a Super 17 uh, from your drop area because the leader just wants to just eat cards up so quickly that, like, if you're not seeing the cards you need, you lose out on the support. This card allows you to steal your opponent's cards. Yeah, and it's... Um, speaking and of I searching... Think you do, yeah, you have, a lot of, uh, you have a lot of effects that you get rid of cards from underneath your 17s and they have effects and things like that but yeah i did get to find my ss4 vermilion saiyans off of my searcher so that's always a good thing yeah when when, when they dropped the anniversary stuff i'm not sure if we talked about it on the channel or not but when they dropped the anniversary stuff for bardock i was like oh yeah crap i meant to buy that secret rare me <laughs> went to go check it and it had jumped up from like i think it was like 60 bucks to like 200 and i'm like ah oh. <laughs> Yeah, well, any SCR that you get to use twice uh, a game is is going to be a you know a good choice. But I do see a lot of people playing uh, Great Ape uh, Cumber. I do see people playing uh, Evil Saiyan as well. But um, I just the art on this card is so you know too cool, so I, I had to leave it in. Yeah, and it's one of those things. Now that I know you have it, uh, it ignores barrier, which is so so crazy because the six drop and eight drop of uh, super 17 engine will gain barrier on their on the turn they're played so typically to protect it but like i established this board to do some crazy combo stuff and have some great defensive plays on your turn and you can go just go tap one gate uh pop it and i'm like well that all, yeah yep absolutely now i will say i, I gotta get a little bit of beef off of my chest here because um a lot of people are uh, getting onto this Bardock deck, uh, and it feels a little bit like getting onto the bandwagon. <laughs> a lot of these uh, these matches that I've been seeing online, but um, you know, it's it was difficult for me to transition to a new play style uh, when I was so used to playing this deck in a specific way. Um, but I love the fact that it's actually doing pretty well, uh, and those that were putting this at you know low tier or local tier or rogue tier are now seeing its uh, value. SS4 has always been a good deck. It's kind of like the AOD, where like any deck that can quickly spam cards out for very cheap is good. Absolutely. Yeah. So this play was interesting, and I I was really curious on your on the mindset here. Um, I know your leader, you'll get the recent energy, so you're, you're kind of safe there. But I always felt like that three drops always a good defensive play. 
Yeah, it and because I didn't have any other blue cards in my hand, I felt like I needed to get this out so that I could at least get that extra draw, get the restand at the end of turn. Um, worst case scenario, it goes away, and I can hopefully draw into another blue. So here's where this deck likes to shine. Um, this four drop, Super 17, pretty much at the beginning of your turn, uh, at the start of your turn, you play one of the cards, you put the other one, here's the energy. So you're set up to go into your six drop for one energy, but I think you pay anything to put on the board. Um, but there's a risk here. That card ha doesn't have to flect. So there's always the chance that you could counterplay it coming into play. And then if you do that, my entire thing is messed up. I can no longer awaken. I can't go into the six drop. I can't go into the Z leader. I can't do all the juggling, get myself at a hefty leader size. But luckily you didn't have a counterplay. Yeah. And uh, there, you know, deciding which energy to restand at the end of your turn is pretty important um, because if you restand a green energy, it tends to be a tell to your opponent that you probably have the Gohan um, uh, counter attack, which I didn't, <laughs> but I wanted you to think that I did. <laughs> so, um, you know, keep that in mind when you're restanding that energy that you're likely telling your, your opponent what you've got in your hand. Yeah. Um, you kindly allowed me to do the correct order, which is once again, activate 17th effect to get my leader cards underneath it and then go into the six drop afterwards, which also helps the hand. Like this deck draws so much more because of this, these anniversary cards. Uh, but now I'm at the Z leader and the, there's a, there's a, there's an order here. If I juggle to the cell absorbed version, then if you tap an energy, it will restand my card. Um, and then has an auto I draw one card. It's once per turn, so I, I can't get the draw twice, unfortunately. Why do I feel like there's a pending auto that won't matter because you have no cards on board? I know the 18 Absorb one uh, pops a card if you were to pay an energy. That's four or less. But I cannot remember top of my, top of my head if the uh, Cell Absorb one does. Yeah, I know that you had said a couple of times it may actually be on that uh, on that first battle card near your leader that it pops two things or. I'm, I'm pulling thing. up real quick. I can't remember for some okay. reason. And having that having that threat of you being able to restand um, one of your battle cards was a really interesting thing that I had to play around, which is why I decided to go with support um, for the Dark Empire instead of um, a traditional counter attack um, because I didn't want to allow your you know, your cards to restand. So, well, yeah. So the restanding occurs. Um, so the 17 minutes underneath a, a, uh, a card will restand the card into my turn. And then at, in your turn, um, when you declare an attack, if I have the 18 absorbed, uh, Z leader, I get to restand a super 17. So kind of like the idea I block with a super 17, then I use the leaders auto to restand that card again. So I can block once more. Right, right, right. Um, here he is. The Bacol Union. If it's your turn when an opponent's energy is switched to rest mode, switch this card active mode, choose one of your opponent's battle cards and KO it. Yeah, but you can have, uh, no. Oh, man. We talked a bit. I can't remember when you activate it. That, uh. Oh, but you, you didn't say use the energy. You, uh, you took a life for it, so it didn't really matter. Yeah, you, you were smart on the order of doing that. That's correct. Yes. So here I'm going into my turn four. I have to get a blue down, which thank God I actually drew one. I think it may have actually been off my life. Um, but now all of my leader effects on swing are active. Um, and now I am trying to figure out how to make this Bardock hurt the most. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, I am a little bit um, too excited to get this great effect off. And uh, we do see a misplay coming up here. Yeah, yeah. It, wording's definitely key. We'll talk about it when it happens. We catch it kind of in the action because I go, what we'll, we'll, we'll happen when we get into the action? But So it's a nice little 16K. You swing at my one guy. And I'm like, okay, well, I got, my big six drop is 20K. I can block. I can do X, Y, Z. Yeah, I can do this. So I negate with dormant. I think it has bears. So I can't touch it. And then do all the leader's autos. Um, so your attack's going to here. And you're just reading 
I think the the card for afterwards, or maybe you just yeah. Say no. I know. Well, yeah, I know. There's a way to get my Vermilion Saiyans to activate. I'm just trying to figure out what the timing needs to be, and it's activate main. Um, so like there's no combos were used in that fight. Correct. Yep. Yeah. I just wanted to get an extra little attack off. So yeah, you you proc the ability. The problem is that. You have four energy, but the card specifies if your opponent has four energy. And and, and that's on the activate main of Vermilion Saiyans itself, not on the uh, the battle card. So you get all these plays out, and I'm like, okay, you get this card back again, right? And I go to read it because I want to double check if it, had, if it ignored barrier or not. And then this is when I see, oh, I'm supposed to be at four energy, not you. <laughs> Yep, and so I just wipe the egg off my face and say, well, I made the play. I'll go ahead and just kind of eat the the misplay, reshuffle my cards in there. Um, and we talked to Jimmy a little bit about this because, like, it's one of those things, like, could you have activated the main on the battle card? Yes, but nothing happens. So the, the card still goes to the warp. It doesn't get procced because you, you don't meet the requirement for its skill. So, and then you'll get the card back at the, uh, at the end of your turn. Which you'll have one more attack right now. And this, through this whole game, um, I was early on slowly kind of poking at your unison when I felt it was necessary. Only because in a previous match, I didn't poke your unison and it definitely <laughs> came back and bite me. Yeah, yeah, it does have that really nice minus two effect. Yeah. So here I took uh, you swung, I took the damage, just get the four life to knock you super combos, and now I'm in this situation. I'm like, okay, uh, he could just pay one, clear my whole board, and make me start over again. You have no cards for me to eat, so I try to bid out cards first by swinging of other cards. I think initially. Um, because the active main doesn't necessarily have to be when the card's in active mode, just means whenever once the card underneath my um, Super 17 right here. So I'm just swinging to see if you would do anything. Um, you do negate. I did not switch my cards around, but it doesn't really matter. It's fine. I was kind of baiting for things to happen because I didn't want to just um, use the effect that you play like a, a token negate or something. And then I'm like, well, now I could have eaten that card. So here, the reason I'm super coming against your unison, I have your unison, it's fine. I have not seen the A drop yet. And I'm like, I just need to dig for an A drop. So I drew two cards, warped one, I'm like, okay. Didn't see it there either. I'm like, this is annoying. Um, What do I do now? <laughs> Does it feel like draw power or searchability is is tough or tutoring is tough in the, that 17 deck? This is the first time I've ever had the problem with not... Um, Seeing the A drop by this point. So I, I said, screw it. I'll just go ahead and play another uh, four drop. I only have actually one target in my um, yada yada for it. So I'm like, oh, well, that's unfortunate. So now I can't proc its ability to send it to the warp to play it afterwards. Because it says send two cards, not up to two cards. Now, maybe I could have sent the one. I don't know the whole rolling. If anyone wants to maybe... Correct me in the comments. I would appreciate that. I'm sure they'll correct you in the comments. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, and, and have, having that Vermilion Saiyans in my hand, I, using it to just pop like two or so cards, it didn't feel as beneficial as just letting that unison die. Because at this point in time, I've already drawn quite a few, you know, quite a few cards from it. Um, so I just went ahead and, and let it go. Oh, okay, yeah. So, because you weren't playing cards, um, I had to play the four drop, and I had to eat both cards underneath both my cards. So, like, now I have nothing underneath my cards at all, which really sucks. And as you all see, I have nothing left in my deck. Like, I, I pulled out the rest of my uh, 17s I had, which is one card. There is a Dr. Mew card, which I do play in this in this deck, which allows me to play them with their skills negated, though, so I don't get their abilities. But it will allow me to get the H-drop if I can see it next turn. And there's also a couple of negates I can use as well. I can't remember if you're swinging to my lead here or if you're swinging to the 4-drop, 
but I kind of just want the extra pressure to force you to use the gate on your turn. So I'm trying to do what I can to keep cards alive. Uh, we will correct that. Um, that card does cost one. I don't want to use the one for it. I thought I always thought the uh, the one cost was to give it a double strike, but it immediately gets a double strike if your uh, the card's Android. And now here I was able to activate Vermilion Saiyans for real this time. Um, the new Goku and new Vegeta uh, do have on play autos that are not necessarily from hand. Uh, while the old school uh, Vegeta and Gohan do have autos, and you put um, those cards back real quick. You, you, yeah, I do. Yep, yep. <laughs> we just reshuffle because nothing has happened since you you just shuffled the cards. So yeah, yeah, yep. But I do have a you know a 16k crit, 16k double strike, um, and then I get to look at the top five. Uh, I do run one of these SS4 Gogetas um, that pulls cards from uh, the opponent's hand. Um, it doesn't get the benefit of the uh, unison, or sorry, not the unison, the uh, Z battle card um, that reduces my Gogeta cards, um, activate mains, but still a good one. And also, uh, to, to you, you may uh, hear an audible gasp from everybody listening, but I do not run any petrifications in my list. I don't understand. <laughs> it's such a good it's such a good card it is it is it really is a good card yeah i just uh yeah i've never i mean obviously i'll need to kind of revamp this if i decide to continue to play it um you know i i, I this is easily one of my favorite decks um but i don't know i i feel like people get frustrated when i play it and i you know just like green i don't i don't like destroying people's spirits i want them to stay in the game for a little while <laughs> So, I th mm. I don't remember why I negated with that one. Maybe I was just trying to get the extra life because I, I was just looking for an A drop somewhere. But you dropping this really hurt. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that that really yeah. hurt. So now I can only attack one more time. Yeah, with uh, with battle cards or yeah. unisons. Yeah, and I think I do now have an A drop. I also have another card. Um, maybe I haven't seen it yet. I know I see Cell Max. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't seen Cell Max yet. Um, so here I'm using the cooler because I just want to get rid of that big card. Like I know it's not the one you got earlier. I still feel comfortable with you attacking that card. I think initially yeah. this is kind of getting you down to my level. Uh Activating the Dr. Mew, like I mentioned earlier, I have, which will play, I think, plays both of them from the drop or deck, I think, with just skills negated. I don't have any of the Hellfighters there because they're either charged or in my energy already. And I just wanted to establish this one just so I could go into the 18 afterwards and uh, have some extra defense during your turn. Yeah, being at two life is always really scary um, because there are so many cards that are now available that play for very little that have those things like dual attack or double strike. Um, it just, it's it's always, you know, you, you, you now are at the edge of your seat when you're in that position. And this right here is just 30. <laughs> just playing another one because <laughs> um, it negs 30K, I think. It does, yep. So I was just like, oh, well, that, 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 yeah, that fixes that problem. I can't do anything about that one now. And because you took out both of my... You didn't choose to go for the the cooler. You went for the Super, the super 17s. So now the gate in my hand is completely useless. I have a gate that's free if I have a Super 17 on board. Well, I obviously played that exactly the way that I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't absolutely by chance. <laughs> Hang on, that's the card I'm talking about. I shouldn't have been able to play that card. Judge. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm mixing two diff two different decks up. I'm mixed. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so that one is free if your leaders. I think is a Z leader. Um, it has all to give a Super Seventeen the ability to reset when you have a blocker. I'm mixing up the Pan deck that I played this past weekend, which has the Pan gate blocker. Ah. Uh, 
that you can only do for free if you have the Goku uh, battle Z battle card on board in your leader's pan. I got those two mixed up just in. I'm the tried and true. If I can't get you with the quad strike Gogeta, I'll get you with the boo. Yeah, I mean, just getting that last hit in, I had no other solution. You do combo up to, I don't remember how far up you go, but it, it's over if I can't. Yeah. Like, if I could have survived that one, I, I all I have left is whatever's in my Z deck, because like, I think my hand would have been empty at that point. But that is today's video. Thank you for tuning in. Keep in mind, there's buttons, links. Check them out, and bye.